As we heard, uh, today's gospel happened shortly after Jesus is baptized in the Jordan River by his cousin John the Baptist. And when Jesus leaves the Jordan, he's filled with the glory of the Holy Spirit. We're told that he's been anointed by the Holy Spirit. He's been given all the graces he's going to need to accomplish his mission in this world. When he leaves the Jordan, though, to the human eye, Jesus looks like any other human being. But everything that he says and does over the course of the next three years will reveal the greatness within him more and more. But for now, as he leaves the Jordan, with his father's affirmation ringing in his ears, this is my beloved son, he's led into the desert for the first real test of that greatness. He's tempted by Satan himself. Now, in reality, the temptation begun in the desert doesn't just come to a complete stop when Jesus leaves the desert. Right? We're told that the Satan left him, the devil left him for a time. That is to return, right? But Jesus is tempted all throughout the course of his public ministry, all three years of that. He's tempted to take an easier road, a more popular road. And he's pressured on both sides, both from his enemies and from his friends. Everyone, it seems, wants Jesus to act and to talk and to do things differently than he does. His preaching of a new kingdom of God and the consequences of that kingdom in terms of how people live their lives, his preaching made a lot of people uncomfortable and some people downright angry. They didn't want to accept what he had to say or respond to the ways that he was challenging their choices and their lifestyle. In fact, no matter what angle people are coming at Jesus from, they didn't like what they heard from him. For instance, those who simply wanted to see a better material world, more worldly success or worldly comfort. Well, they're disappointed to hear him say today, one does not live on bread alone, material things, right? There's far more to this life than what meets the eye. Those who were hoping that Jesus would be a, a political revolutionary and help them overthrow their Roman masters, well, they would have to look elsewhere too, as Jesus clearly is not interested in worldly power and glory at all. As he says today, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. And as for those who think that you can behave foolishly in this world and not pay the price, that you can do whatever you want and it doesn't matter to God? Well, Jesus reminds us not to put God to the test. We know that's one exam that we all would fail, every one of us. So the man who emerges from the desert and from that encounter with Satan, he now heads up to his home region of Galilee to begin the most glorious chapter in the history of the world. By his words and his actions, Jesus is going to show just how glorious God is. And also glory, the glory that's in store for you and I, for all of God's children, every one of his children. Now as for the temptations of the devil, Jesus is going to turn all three of those completely around. For instance, Satan tempts him to turn a stone into bread. Instead, Jesus is going to multiply the loaves and feed the hungry crowd. And most importantly, he's going to give himself to us as the bread of life, as the Eucharist. Satan challenges Jesus to jump off the top of the temple to tempt death. Instead, Jesus later will allow himself to be arrested and put to death on a cross so that the Father will save you and me, all of us, from eternal death. And when it comes to being tempted with all the kingdoms of the world, Well, Jesus instead is going to gather all of his disciples on the mountainside before he ascends back to his Father and tell them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. And all this means that because of Jesus Christ, our human life, your life, my life, our human life is all about real glory, real glory, Not the temporary glory or the false glories of of this life, of fame or power or money or the esteem of other people, but an eternal glory that will never fade. You know, when we consider the billions of people on earth, our own little life story might seem pretty small, pretty insignificant. 
But because of Jesus, that couldn't be further from the truth. Our own journey from the cradle to the grave is so much more. Yes, by myself, I would be pretty small, pretty insignificant, and my life maybe wouldn't count for much. But I am not by myself. None of us are by ourselves, right? We're with Christ. I am with Jesus. And I've been touched by his glory. And his Holy Spirit dwells within me. And that means that we all can say that in all the cosmos, in the entire history of the universe, my life matters. My soul matters. And it's all because of Jesus. All because of Christ. So this Lent... Let's work on recognizing and honoring that glory within ourselves, of course, but even more importantly, within everyone that we meet, everyone that we know. With grateful and humble hearts, let's rid our lives of the things that are not worthy of a child of God. And so keep ourselves always moving toward that eternal, never-fading glory of heaven.